We are into nation building here at the tribe of Houston Rebirth. We are into building our nation up economically, knowledgeable, physically, spiritually, in every aspect of our life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you don't, if I'm quite sure you felt welcome when you came in, but if you didn't, we want to welcome all our visitors. If you are here visiting, we see you at Shabbat Shalom. We have been going through the series of Unlearning the Lies. Say Unlearning the Lies. How many people have been enjoying the series? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people have been learning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people have been studying? Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. I don't want you to come here and, and, and get. I'm not here to give you fish. I'm here to teach you how to fish. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not in business of just giving you fish. And, you know, that's why that multitude followed Mashiach. Because he kept feeding. And he's like, man, y'all Negroes only follow me because I'm giving y'all food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They follow, you know, they made Shia. Like, like, he's preaching on me. He preaching the power of word. But he got some good fish fry going on. Hallelujah. We need to go over there and see because he, man, that fish was seasoned all good. He had some bread and he fed 5,000 and still had some left over. So you know how we are. We got to come back for the food. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, the word is good, but they're like, well, she got that fish you cooked up with something special. Hallelujah. But you think your mama, your grandma could cook? Imagine what she got for the fish fry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, some of y'all too. Okay, y'all too. Right. That ain't funny. Okay. Right. So, we are going through the series of going to learn the lives. Now, we're going to continue this series because as we grasp on to the truth, we have to let go of the lives. Hallelujah. Because it's very hard to come into the truth if we don't let go of the lives. Now, as I said, as we're going through these, these lessons, I want you to go home and study. I don't want you to just take everything what I'm saying at face value. I want you to study. Say study. Yeah. I'll keep go ahead. I'll, then. You can go home and study. Now, this is not just for the adults. Even the you. Say to you. I know my you. I, I love my you. My you is on. Look, they, 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 on, they on point. They don't be playing, right? I want you to go home and study. Why? Because that's teaching you. I'm not just taking what everything is said. I'm going home, I'm researching it, and I'm finding out if what is said is true. Hallelujah. Because a lot of us are coming out of the Babylonian system. And it's very hard to let it go. It's kind of like a drug. Hallelujah. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but man, when the most I first brought me to the truth around 2013, I believe 2012 or something like that. Man, man, I had you know, I was wrestling with the most I. I was like, wait, 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 wait. The only thing I could tell him was, this is not what I was told. So I can't go with this. But he said, stop going by what you know and go by my rule. And as I begin to open the word, as I begin to just read it all over again, it started to open up because I allowed the Ruba to leave me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I, I believe it was for a whole year. I just, I didn't listen to any preaching. I ain't listening to you know, unless I was going to church. I didn't listen to anything. I just wanted to hear the voice of the Most High so I could make sure it's Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I encourage you as we go through this series. Now, we're not going through this series so you can walk up in your old church. They go tell them how wrong they are. Right. Because my friend, you will go to jail. Look at my say you will go to jail. <laughs> some folks will call the police, so you don't be like some of these crazy people who's going up, disrupting a service, acting a fool. And bro, that's not what's look somebody say the most high is the most high of order. Say order. You know, we get a we get a little bit of knowledge, or us for we. We think we know it all. Oh man, I'm gonna go tell that support child what are you doing. No. No. You don't go and disrupt the service. You don't go. Your series is not for you to go argue with your family. Hallelujah. 
This is so you can let go of lies so you won't be deceived. Now, if somebody want to bring these things up to you, you can easily, boom, because you've been studying, you've been learning, you can easily dissect what they've been saying. Hallelujah. But you don't go there looking for an argument. You know what I'm saying? We just learned about Lucifer. You know, somebody say the word Lucifer, you say, oh, Lucifer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so you think Lucifer is a real person? No, he's not the God. Man. It's, it's not for what it is. Hallelujah. This is here so you can learn, so you can grow, so you can teach your family, so they can grow, so you can break this generational curse of indoctrination. Hallelujah. It's time to let it go and embrace the truth. So, I know, as you can see, the topic of this week we're going to come from is the American Jesus versus the Hebrew Yahushua. This is going to fix somebody say, it's going to be good. Now, before we get into this, for my Christian people that's watching, with the camera, camera right here, camera there. This is not to be literally in any way. Now, there are also people who may be within here that may still use the name Jesus. We are not beating you down. I'm giving you this information so you can know. Because, I don't know about you, but I've seen demons cast out in the name of Jesus. I've seen people healed in the name of Jesus. I've seen power manifest in the name of Jesus. So, now that we get over to understanding who we are and understanding the true name, we just can't throw everybody out the window because they may still use that name. Because there was a time in your life, say time in my life, my life, where you used the name, and if somebody would have came at you saying, nah, you better not do it, you would have you would have rebuked them and prayed against them and did all type of stuff. But now you are all where you are, you have to be patient. Say patient. patient. Now there's a flip side here. Now, just because we're saying be patient, that doesn't mean you stay ignorant to it just because it's okay to do. Everybody get what I'm saying? So, the person that may use the name Jesus, okay, we're patient. As time goes on, you learn, you use it. I may still use it in the, when I'm reading the scripture. It's not a bad word, but we are going through these lessons so you can understand the words that you are using. So that based off this lesson, and when we're done, you make the decision. Man, I'm going to keep using the name Jesus. Or man, I may need to let it go. Or you may say, man, I'm not ready for that, but that's good information. That's okay too. Hallelujah. I want everyone to learn at their own pace. This is not a race. It's not a race. Because as we go on, guess what? I'm still learning. Anybody here not still learning? Okay, because if anybody raise their hand, I'm like, well, that's a fool right there. Right? Because if you ever want to know a fool, be the person that think they know everything. Mm. But as I grow, I learn from you just like you learn from me. Iron sharpens iron. Hallelujah. So this is not to belittle anyone, but this is just to this is just to show the truth. Say the truth. We have to unlearn the lies. We have to figure out where these things came from that we've been indoctrinated with. Because we just can't keep going with things on the whim. We just can't keep going with the flow. Hallelujah. If I'm doing something, I want to make sure it's the truth. Hallelujah. If I'm doing something, I want to make sure it's right. And if it's not right, and the word says it's not right, I need to write a line myself with it. Hallelujah. All right, I have this picture of the, of the apple. You know, it's a, a golden apple. On the outside, it looks real pretty. When you bite into it, it's rotten to the core. Lord. Say to the core. Lord. And in a sense, that's what indoctrination has been. It has looked good, it's felt good, but once we get into the core of it, we realize how rotten it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, we ain't gonna go on, we gonna talk. Let's get into it. Let's build. A foundation. John chapter 16. I mean chapter 19. Verses 16 through 20. We are going to lay some foundation down. 
before we start up there. Starting at verse 16, then delivered he him, therefore, unto him to be crucified. And they took Yahshua, or Jesus, and led him away. And he bare his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Yahshua in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title, say he wrote a title, and put it on the stake. I know some Bible say cross you stake, but we know it was a stake. Hallelujah. Put it on a stake. And the writing was Yahshua of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Yahshua was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and in Latin. In Hebrew, say in Hebrew, say in Greek, and in Latin, say in Latin. Anybody know why it was written in those three languages? Anybody? Oh, shoot. Those were the major three languages at that time, right? They was, they were speaking Hebrew and they kind of went into Arabic and went into the Latin and, and in the Greek. So that title was written in all three of those because amongst the Hebrews, you had a lot of Greeks. Now, if you study, you'll realize when Mashiach said he was going because there was another sheep that he had on his fold that he must bring into, the disciples conversed amongst themselves and said, so he go amongst the dispersed, which was those that were scattered because of the Assyrian captivity. Now, when they were scattered, they were looked to by Judah, the ones that were in the land when Mashiach came, as Gentiles. Say Gentiles. Gentiles. So every time you see Gentiles in Greek, it ain't always talking about non-Jews, because many of the times that word is translated into Hellenistic Jews. So Jews that are Jewish by blood or Hebrew by blood, but they have taken on the lifestyle of Greek or another nation. We talked about it many a times, how they were so adapted to Greek captivity and to Greek customs that they even tried to uncircumcise themselves because they were so adapted to the culture. And in this sense now, you have a lot of Hebrews today that so Americanized, they can't let America go. In so much that they're willing to reject their birthright to stay connected to the United States of America. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Starting at, I'm sorry, starting at verse 13. 13 and 14. Romans chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. For whosoever shall call upon the name, say the name. The name, the name is important. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So, we see this throughout our lifetime. We've been told about one Mashiach, but we haven't been told about the true Mashiach. But how can we know if we have not heard? How can we hear if no one is teaching? How can they teach if no one is sent? But that's why we are here on this day, because we are learning, we are studying, because there's going to come a time where you're going to have to go out and tell those about who the real Mashiach is. As a matter of fact, that time is now. What somebody say is now. Now. You don't have to have a microphone to stand before people to do it. You can walk up right during your job and tell somebody about who the true Mashiach is. But just make sure you do it on your lunchtime. Take it on your lunchtime. Take it on your lunchtime. Don't be talking about the devil that got you fired. You still in time, man. 
You just can't be stealing the people time like that is enough. They look at you and say, Hebrew, wait till you go on your break. Say, go on your break. Come on. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. We're going to start at verse 3. But I fear, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, I fear lest by any means as the serpent the gall Eve through his that's a crazy word for me. I know it's subtle, but it got a T-I-L-T-Y at the end. So subtility. That, that's what it says. Say it. Somebody say it. Subtility. 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 Okay. Thank you. Because I was struggling with that word. I was probably up to like 3 in the morning trying to say that word. Listen. I went to Google trying to play. They want to play. I said, man, they're trying to say that word. They're trying to say that word. All right. Simplicity. But I fear lest by any means as a servant of God he through his subtility. No, so simplicity. Your, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Mashiach. For if he that cometh preaching another Mashiach, say another Mashiach, another, Mashiach. another Yahushua, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another Ruach or spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, say another gospel, another gospel, another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might, ye might well bear with him. So Paul was talking to the Corinthians at this time, he was telling them, listen, I fear because I think when somebody come preach another gospel, not a different spirit, and, and come preaching um, another Mashiach, y'all gonna bear with him. We even told the Galatians, all the foolish Galatians who had bewitched you that you will not follow the truth. The truth of the true gospel. Say the true gospel. Yeah, hey, I know we talk about what the true gospel is. We broke that all the way down. It's on our YouTube page. I can check it out. But there has been another gospel that has been indoctrinated into our minds. So it's very important for us to get the true gospel. Say the true gospel. No, the true gospel is not the death, burial, and resurrection of Mashiach. That is part, say part. That is part of the gospel, which is a very important part of the gospel. But it is not the whole gospel. Say it's not the whole gospel. Because if it is the whole gospel, what gospel was the disciples preaching when he sent them out among the multitude? Because he didn't die. He wasn't risen or anything yet. So what gospel was they preaching? They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom, say the kingdom. Which consists of the king, which is Mashiach, which consists of laws, say laws, which you need laws in the kingdom, which consists of a people, say a people. That's why he told them, don't go on the way to the Gentiles, but go eat therefore to Israel, right? And you need land. Say land. Amen. All those things Mashiach dealt with throughout his ministry because he came to preach the kingdom. Say the kingdom. Amen. But we have to preach in one aspect of it. And that's why we've been falling short. Now the Bible says once this gospel is reached to the four corners of the earth, then the end shall come. Now we know that this American gospel has already reached the four corners and probably even gone beyond the four corners. So why hasn't the end came yet? Because it's not the true gospel. Say it's not the true gospel. But well, we're going to deal with it today. Come on. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 5 and 8. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lie. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. But knowledge is easy. Say it's easy. easy. Knowledge is easy unto him that understands it. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceiveth not in him the lips of knowledge. So get away from crazy folk if they ain't speaking the right thing. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of a fool is deceit. And that is what this foolish nation has been giving us our whole life. A deceitful message. But now it's time 
to learn. Say you don't learn the lies. Second Thessalonians. Still laying the foundation, chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Even him whose coming is after the work of the time, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because, say because, because they receive not the love of the truth. Say the truth. That word truth is directly connected with the word law. Say law. If you, if you do a word study, you see how direct connected they are. Matter of fact, the Bible says the law is true. So the love of the truth that they might be saved. So because they reject, they receive not the love of the law and the love of the truth that they might be saved. Look at what the Most High does. And for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusion. Say strong delusion. Strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Mm. So, because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, the Most I sent a strong delusion amongst us so that we believe they lie for a season. And it wasn't the Most High doing; it's our sin that got us in that situation. So, because we chose not to embrace the law or the truth, He said they strong. Delusion, say strong delusion. Now we know that one of the curses is once I send you into the land where you know not the tongue of those captives, I'm kind of half living. He said you will serve Elohim of wood and of stone. Now if you look into that, the Elohim of wood and stone is the wooden cross, which is in Christianity, and the copper stone, which is in Islam. And if you want to find our people in any religion, the two main religions you find them in is those two. Mm -hmm. So he said, because they receive not the love of the truth. Now that only applies to us, because they are many people that are not in the truth. They choose to reject the law, and because of that, the Most High is sending them strong delusion. Or you think, I said, time got some delusion? Imagine the Most High sending you some delusion. Mm. It's going to look so real, you're going to think it's the real thing. That's why it's important to have discernment in these last days. See, a lot of people are still waiting for the strong delusion to come, not understanding that it's been here since we got here. But see, that's part of the strong delusion, because you're thinking it ain't here yet. And it's been here, and it's been here. That they all might be there who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness or law breaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Here we go. The power of a name. Say the power of a name. Hallelujah. Power of a name is very important. See, we have to get out of Western thinking. Because in Eastern culture, a name is important. You don't just go name your kid Lexus. <laughs> My sister named Lexus. She gonna kill me. Right? My mom gonna give me two. You don't name him Lexus and you, you drive him pop pup, right? <laughs> All right, somebody be here and find I'm not, I'm not doing your name. I'm just giving an example. We give names because they sound good. But we don't look into the meaning of names. Right. And see, we've been sent, you know, we've been told a lie that the names that we give our children are ghetto names. Mm -hmm. Any name that ends with the uh or ya, we've been told that's ghetto. Don't name your child that. Shanika or Shanika, right? Now understand that we didn't know at the time that that was the Hebrew that was in us that was coming out. Because the Most High always had the name Yah or Ah in the name of his prophets or the people that he sent. Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Hezekiah, right? These are names where we've been told, oh man, those ghetto names. Don't name your child that. So you go name your child Betty. <laughs> is a pretty name. And Lexus is a pretty name. Okay? 
But I'm giving you an example to show how we in our Western thinking pay attention to the sound of the name, but Eastern culture don't care about how it sounds. They care about the meaning of the name. Hallelujah. That's why names are important. Say they're important. Important. Names mean something in Western culture, but not in what not many mean something in Eastern culture, but not in Western culture. When Yah gave men names, it aligned with the assignment that was given. For example, Abram name meant exalted father. Abram went to Abraham. Abraham means the father of a multitude. So whenever the Most High changed their name, he made it fit the purpose that they were going to fulfill. That's why it's very important for us to name our children the right thing. Now I know some, you know, like man, it's too late now. You know, I didn't. I mean, if I could do it, I probably name some of my kids. You know, different than. But some people even change their names coming over to the street, which is nothing wrong with. It. I'm trying to find the right name so I can, you know, what I'm saying. So just be patient. Still call me just. Hallelujah. But. It's important because we don't understand that slave masters left their name on us so that their legacy can live forever. So no matter what we do, Bray, which is my last name, will always be associated back to the slave master that my great, great, great grandfather got it from. Because we was part of the Bray household or the Bray house, which was a plantation. So that's why when people come into the truth, they change that name because they don't want that spirit or that character associated with who they're becoming. Mm. So don't be people up because they want to change that name. Just because you can't pronounce it, you get mad. <laughs> right? But remember, we're not into how it sounds, we're into what it means. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah I've been struggling with some, you know, some odd names. They have like a four-syllable name. And I Say, I, I'm just going to call you my brother until I can figure it out, right? Don't get mad at me because I'm not good with you. You see, I couldn't even pronounce that one word. And that's in English, right? So, names are important. The word name in a strong definition, check it out, means character, authority, and reputation. Character, say character. Authority, Authority, reputation. Now, if you ask the coat, uh, I believe it was uh, for a um, Jonathan, went in depth with this before baptism, which is very important. Because name doesn't just mean something that you give someone, it has meaning behind it. Within some African tribes over there that practice Hebrew in Africa, their name gives you the address to where they live at. That if one of them dropped dead, then based off their name, they don't know where they gotta go drop the body off. Names are important, say they're important. So name means character, authority, and reputation. Matthew chapter seven, verse 22. Give you an example. Many, he said, will say, to me in that day, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, we have not, have we not prophesied in thy name. In that name, you saw my in your authority. Say authority. And in, in thy name, have cast out devils, and in thy name or authority, done many wonderful works. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. One of the commandments is, thou shalt not take the name, say the name. When you're talking about the name, you're talking about the reputation. Don't take the reputation of Yahuwah, the Elohim, in vain. For Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless, guiltless that take his name in vain. That's why I'm big on us carrying the name of the Most High. We have to make sure we carry it right. Because our lifestyle can cause us to speak the name of the Most High in vain. Because as we carry the name of the Most High, we are carrying his character. Say his character. Yes. So if we're carrying his character, that means we
we don't only gotta walk like him, I mean talk like him, but we also have to walk, say walk. walk. We gotta walk like him too. John chapter 5, verse 43. I come in my father's name, Mrs. Mashi, I'm talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. I come in my father's name. What do you mean when he came in his father's name? He comes in his father's character. And he received me not. If another man came in his own name or his own character, you'll freely receive him. So name is about character, it's about reputation, and it's about authority. Say authority. So a name is very important. That's why we are dealing with the name of Jesus versus the name of Yahushua. Let's get into it. Stay with me now. Don't, don't cut the video off. We, we, we just, we just going to deal with some facts. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Facts about the name of Jesus. One thing you have to know, that there was no English language during the Bible times. You know, some people don't even know that until you say it. Wait, 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 what's it? Mm -hmm. They think English been, like was the first language. English is one of the newest languages on this earth. So there was no English language during biblical times. That's just one fact you just got to know. I mean, just based off that, we can kind of hit it, right? But you know how folks say you know, they need to know. The letter J, I know most people have heard this. The letter J did not come into existence until between 1516 and 1524. By Gangororio Tresino, an Italian Renaissance grammar guy. I know I don't say grandma God, but that's what that means. <laughs> he basically held me grandma. <laughs> I like this dude. Chop it up, bro. Yes, it's, it's my slide. I can chop it up. I don't want to chop it <laughs> So, so, this Italian dude, he basically, he, was, he, he introduced the letter J into old English and then brought it into modern day English. Before the letter J evolved, it carried no sign to the letter. So when it first was created, it was a silent letter. And we're gonna get into how it how it came from Yahshua with the Jew and so on. Before we get there, we gotta show how it got there. So before the letter J evolved, it carried no sign to the letter. So it was silent. Say silent. The letter J was used to replace letters like the letter Y or the letter I. That's why if you go get a 1611 King James Bible, you won't see the letter J in here. You'll see where J's are, the letter I's are, the letter Y's. Because the letter J was sent to replace those two letters. One of the reasons why I was sent to replace the letter Y, because we know the letter Y starts with the name of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And one example is the word hallelujah. In Christianity, we spell hallelujah with a J, and we always talk, which is what we was afraid to ask. Man, why is there a J? We're supposed to be saying hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not understanding that letter J was placed there to replace the letter Y. Why? To take out the name within hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise the most. Hiyah. It's the highest praise. That's why we put emphasis on the Yah when we say hallelujah. But the letter J was sent to replace those two letters. I wonder why. The current and modern English did not exist until the 17th century. The current and modern English, now old English existed before then, but old English, new English and modern English end up evolving past the old English. Like we don't talk like the old, you know, like British and all, right? We got our own thing, right? But this modern day English that we speak now didn't come about to the 17th century. Just give you some facts before we get into it. Y'all ready for this one? The name Jesus 
holds no meaning. Say no meaning. No meaning. Holds no meaning because it is a transliteration and not a translation. Flip side of that, the name of Yahushua, Yah Yahshua gives the meaning and the mission of the Son of the Most High. So the name Jesus, if you don't look it up, it doesn't mean anything. It gives you a biography of who Mashiach was, but it has no meaning to the name. Because they were so involved in transliteration, they didn't translate the word. So the name Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, holds no meaning. You were looking up in a dictionary and tell you who he was, but it don't tell you what it means. It will say a man, he walked the earth, you know, he died, born, raised on the third day, he is the leader of the Christian faith, etc., etc. Tell you what he did, but it will not tell you who he is. Who he is matters in a name. Because a name must hold meaning when it's coming from the Eastern culture. Western culture only cares about how it sounds. Eastern culture, you can have Zaluma <laughs> Viruma. But that name means something in that language. Yeah. I just made that up. So I know that. <laughs> but it means something in that language because they don't care about the sound. They care about the meaning where we all flip, where we care about the sound and not the meaning of the word. Hallelujah. Translation versus transliteration. Translation, now I, I, this is, I basically put it in a nutshell, definition. When I looked up both the words and put it in a nutshell. But translation is basically taking a word and using it in a different language with the same meaning. Meaning and context is important when translating. So when you're translating something, you're not just trying to get the sound, but you're trying to get the meaning of what a person is saying. Like when a person translates, or like if you have a Hispanic uh, person in here, and um, and I know a little Spanish, you know, Piquito, as you look, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Piquito, yeah, that's a good one. Piquito means little, right? That's a translation, right? I'm not trying to make it sound like little, but I'm giving you the true meaning of what it is, right? So translation is taking a word and using a different language with the same meaning. Well, meaning and context is important. Right, everybody did? Right. Transliteration is taking the sound, say the sound. The sound of a word without utilizing the meaning of the word. Pronunciation is important while context can be lost. Everybody here? Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. Transliteration is taking the sound of a word without utilizing the meaning of the word. Pronunciation is important while context can be lost. Names do not change across languages if the person is able to pronounce the name in the original language. Okay? Names do not change across languages if the person is able to pronounce the name in the original language. When they can't, they transliterate or they substitute the name. We don't get it further, just want to make sure y'all get this. This is an example. Revelation 9 and 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Adonai. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. See how they had to come up with a whole new word? The evolution of the name of Jesus. Anybody questions so far? No? Okay, good. Maybe we learned it. Good. Now, this is a pictograph that I'm going to break it down. So, up at the top, you see the uh, ancient Hebrew, right? And you know, you read it from left to right, not right to left, right? But we're just gonna start from Yahushua and go down, right? So Yahushua 
means, which we don't get into it, means salvation of Yahoo. While Jesus means exactly nothing. But we've been told that and indoctrinated with it, so we just took it and ran with it. So, basically, in Greek, so, y'all know the Old Testament written in what? Hebrew, right? New Testament written in what? Greek. Because during this time when Mashiach came, I mean, the Greek captivity happened and they came out, you know, speaking Greek. And Greek, you know, it took over, you know, language, everything. All right? So, Greek. So, where, 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 where let me come up here. Matter of fact, I got a little lazy on here. Let me see if it won't work with it. Oh, it won't work with me. Look at me. I look crazy now. All right, so we see a transition from Yahushua to, I ain't even gonna say that in Greek now. Yeah, remember this my slide, you do love So we see the transition from Hebrew to Greek to Latin to English, okay? So, Yahoo, when it's translated into Greek, they don't have a sound that makes the Yah sound. So instead of Greeks, because they don't have a, a word that makes the Yah sound, they change it to Ai or Ai or something. I don't know how to pronounce it, but y'all get the picture, right? I ain't gonna be able to pronounce the words and all that. So also in Greek, they don't have the sh sound. So instead of the sh or the sound with the you know sh, they just use s. s. Because what? They are transliterating the words, so they are more focused on the, the sound than the meaning. You follow? Me? The last part of them, they don't have that, so they use O. I don't need to before I start. O U S. All right. So this is basically showing you the evolution of the name of Jesus. So from Greek it went into Latin. And then the English transliterated from the Latin to English. But that's a problem. Why is that a problem, anybody? They gotta go back to the original Hebrew. Why? Because in our English alphabet, we have all the letters and the sounds to not only translate Yahshua correctly, but we don't even have to translate it because we can say Yahshua. <laughs> so why are we translating or you know, transliterating when we can say the actual name? Why did they do that? They did it because they had an agenda. Because you know when we came over here as slaves, one of the first things they did is they changed our names. Say they changed our names. They changed our names because our names carried the name of Yah in it. And every time they said our name, our name will give praise to the Most High. So they gave us different names. So they knew if we're changing their name, then we got to change the name of their Mashiach. Because every time they say the name of Mashiach, it'll give praise to the Hebrew Elohim. And instead of giving praise to the Hebrew Elohim, Let's give them a name that gave praise to the Greek Elohim. So you have Greek translated to Latin and translated to English. Right? So because they didn't have those sounds, they transliterated to the closest sound that they can get. While transliterating the word, they lost the meaning and the mystery. Because Jesus does not mean Yahshua. Let me not get ahead. Arabic and Hebrew has the same as some of the same letters and sounds, while Greek and Hebrew does not. So you can translate with Arabic and Hebrew. Remember, that's why Pilate wrote in three different languages on the top of the state, right? But you can translate from Arabic to Hebrew because they have a lot of letters and sounds that's closely connected. But when it comes to Greek and Hebrew, they have 
They don't have sounds or letters that's the same. So when Greek translate over to Hebrew, instead of translating words, they transliterate words. Got it? When they, English and Greek, transliterated the word Yahshua, they created a new word, say a new word, new that had a, de a different definition in their own language. We can, say we can. we can. We can translate the full name Yahshua from Hebrew to English because we have all the letters and sounds to do so. We can do it. So why can they go to Jesus? Because they had an agenda. If we honestly translate, say honestly translate. If we honestly translate, even though we don't have to, the word Yahshua to English, we will get the name Joshua and not Jesus. If we translate, do a for real translation, not what they did English, if we translate the name Yahshua into English, we don't get Jesus. We get Joshua. Joshua and Mashiach, or Jesus, had the exact same name. That's why Joshua was like a foreshadow of what Mashiach will come to do. Joshua led the people into the promised land. That's what Mashiach is going to do in the future. That's why they had the same name. Hallelujah. So we are going to honestly translate, okay, we we in America, we speak English, so we don't need to be using the Hebrew name. Okay, well if you want to be technical like that, then go ahead and translate the word right. Instead of using Jesus, use Joshua. Say Joshua. Because the name Jesus has no meaning. I'm not saying it never had power. Because it once did. But the most high winked at our ignorance because we didn't know. He said, you, you know, eventually they're going to come to the truth. Let them use it because I understand what they're doing. Because as Hop Moore said one time, there is a system of worship to Elohim. So it's really not stuck on the name. So don't get caught up in that. Because it's not about what you say. The name, it means character, authority, and what? Reputation. So it's a worship system whenever you're dealing with Halloween. For example, when Elijah came across the prophets of Baal, they had a system of worship that they did to worship their Halloween. They was cutting themselves, they was doing all that, they was marching around a thing, and nothing happened. But she got set up a worship system for us, so no matter what name, because see, you can't get caught up on names, because every language can't translate Yahshua, so they have to say their, the, the way Yahshua is in their language. So they don't make it in? No. Because it's not caught up on names, it's caught up in the system of worship. Because he said it's going to come a time where people are going to worship me in Ruach and in truth. So you're going to walk in the spirit and you're going to live out the law. Because the law is what? True. That's the worship system. Now, when she got weak at our ignorance because we didn't know, so he moved at the name of Jesus. He healed at the name of Jesus. But now that you know, you will be held accountable. Ah. Somebody watch the video. I knew I shouldn't have watched it. <laughs> should have the Bible. Yes. Now they're going to get me on thumbs down. But you still held accountable. Hallelujah. Now the most high will be patient with you. Now let's say we got somebody just came out of church yesterday. No. It takes time. Right? Mm -hmm. You just can't throw them. Hey, hey, don't you say that, J Word. What? <laughs> Leave that person alone and let them grow as time goes on. Hallelujah. Yeah. But now that you know, you're held accountable to. Joshua is the real English translation from the Hebrew word 
from the Hebrew, not Jesus. So next time somebody says, why you always be from the Hebrew word? Just use the name Jesus. Just tell them, well, Jesus ain't the true translation to Yahshua. Joshua is. So instead of using Jesus, you use Joshua. But they mad at you because you're using the original name. What type of foolish sense does that make? You know why they mad? Because that real name holds power. Say power. power. I mean, yes, we knew we used to say name of Jesus holds power, but this name holds the character, the reputation, and the what? Authority. So you don't be scared at that name. Why are you mad if we so-called supposed to be talking about the same person? You mad because I'm calling him the right name instead of the English name? You mad because your name holds no meaning and this name holds power. Say power. Power. The name of Yahushua. The name carries the character, the authority, and the repetition, reputation of the Father Yah. Yahushua literally means salvation of Yahuwah. It literally means that. The salvation of Yahuwah. And it contains the name of the Father within the name. Yes. I'm getting excited with this teaching. I'm sorry. I got a question, Go ahead. When you go into that, because this is always a fact among different Hebrews, that understanding character, authority, and reputation. Is it okay to praise and worship Yeshua? Being the fact that it's all connected to the Father. Yes, in a sense. Now, remember, Mashiach said, when I leave, you're not, you're not going to ask me anything, but you should ask the Father in my name. Yeah. Anytime someone try to come to Mashiach and worship, he say, hey, listen, go to the Father. Right. right? So you worship, you give him honor and respect. Right. But we know all praise even goes to the, the Father. But you have to, in order to get to the Father, you got to go through the Son. So we got Bruce trying to skip over the Son and get to the Father when Mashiach talked about you because he said you a thief and a robber. Because if you try to go in any other way, then don't go in, you are a thief and a robber. Yeah, I said it. Look, somebody said, I said it. I said it. Check this out. A son's name must contain the family name, and in this case, it does. The father's name is on the son, and that validates his connection to the father. We're talking about the name of Yahushua. The son's name carries the father's name, so how dare you reject that name? When the name Jesus holds, no mean. Say no mean. Now, we, like I said, we're not beating you up. But we're just here to learn. Say to learn. John chapter 5, verses 42 through 45. But I know you, this is Mashiach told that he had not love. You have not the love of that only me. I come in my father's name. Say in my father's name. And he received me not. If another shall come in his own name, then he will receive. How can you believe which will receive honor one of another and see not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Now, you know, when it gets down over to like chapter 8, you know, that's what she, she got to end on that chapter. Um, I read that right there when he just was. He remember that's when he said, listen, before Moses was, I am. It was like, what? Because <laughs> <laughs> they was like, no, so you're not even 50 years old talking about your greater than Moses. Moses is our father. She was like, man, before Moses was, I am. 
And then you know every time you got the stone, he just slip away. <laughs> you get by here real quick. <laughs> She out, right? I can't wait to see it, man. He just let me get up out of here because they plotting right now. You know how, okay, you know how when you was in the world, you'd be in the club, you just feel like something about to go down. Get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? They ain't having no gun, they have rocks. Right, yeah. It ain't like you having a shootout. You get hit with a rock. I mean, that rock was big, you know? And you just, you know, because Mashiach, I don't quite sure they hit Mashiach with one of the rocks before his time. Now, with the crucifixion, that's different. If you had hit Mashiach before that time, Mashiach probably got busy with you, bro. Like, but I ain't even no rock. Like, <laughs> like, this ain't no more than the key in our bodies. You know what I mean? We were busy. I'm just like, who shot that rock? Hey, Peter, who shot that? Yo, let's go. Come on. So we can buy you, bro. He ran into hell. Come on, man. All these people trying to get him. Yo, John, you see who shot it? Who shot the rock, man? Well, I think it, I think it was she. I was just old. Just now I'm about no. I wish he, I wish they would have hit him with that rock, boy. Now when his time came, he had to submit. He was submissive. You know what I'm saying? Nothing, you know, he was but without, but, but before that time, Bro, don't you, I, yo, let me get away, because if you hit me with that rock, it's going to be problems, bro. So I'm going to slip away. That's how much she I was. Let me get out of here, because I would turn this whole game upside. Why do you think nobody touched him when he's flipping over the table? They knew he had the manage, right? Come on now. I mean, come here right now, you know the kids. We think we're about to jump on him. Come here, put on my stuff. I got this stuff set up. What was that? None of them challenged. And he was whipping them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. Right? I think it was the opposite, man. He wasn't. He was a man's man. Hallelujah. We just gotta look at the spiritual side, but the, the, the physical side, people. Like, yo, when she out came, he demand respect. And that's how we should come when we walk in any room. Yeah. Okay, yeah, when you walk in there with your boss, you should be respectful, but demand respect also. Walk with your head up, he you somebody. It's actually a pleasure for him to be in your presence. Thinking you going in, I'm sitting amongst a, a table of all these CEOs, and you just going on. No, walk in with your head up, because you wanted the CEO. You are a king. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. Walk in there like you own. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, how, how you doing? Yeah. Can we get this meeting started? Let's go. Walk in there like you, you got some going. Because we so we be often try to conform to, to how they want us to be. I'm not with you know, my wife, but I don't got I told I don't got the voice, you know, that you get on the phone and, and hello, yeah, how, how are you doing? I don't hey, how you doing? Hey. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yes, 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 man. I don't I don't change my voice up because I am who I am. I can be professional and still keep my voice. I don't have that. Yeah, no, no, really. Then when they see me, they're like, what? <laughs> and they'll never hear me talking like that for the rest of my life. Like, this dude deceived us. So, the name of Yahushua, it carries the name of the Father within. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Greek Jesus versus the Hebrew Mashiach. Let's see. Let's see the difference. You see, because now when we are in Christianity, understand many of us did worship the most high in all the spirit and truth. They spoke what we knew. Hallelujah. But we thinking you okay, if you think that people that are within the church are all just deceived, based off their knowledge, they're going with what they know. Because you once went with what you 
No, come on. Stop throwing everybody away. It's going to take time. And then when they get to a certain point, then I'm like, yo, I was really crazy back there thinking that. Because we all think that about ourselves, right? So, we are coming after the westernized Jesus. See, if you have a Western thinking of who Mashiach is, a Western thinking of who Yah is, you are serving a different Elohim. You are not serving the Elohim of the Bible because you got to understand, when they brought us over here into the land, the reason why you have so many of our people hating the Bible and they try to associate the Bible with the white man, right? When names about as crazy as Chinese, white, but you know, you know them crazy boobs. Right, man, shut up, man, you know. They be so tough over the internet. I don't, you know, but you know, in person, they be Superman, but in person they be Clark Kent. You know, it's like they change. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all don't really believe some of the stuff I get in the inbox and dudes is just, I, you know, bro, you just keep that energy as long as you don't break it. Here because we got them like Mashiach, you know what I'm saying? We got, come on now. Let me back. Let me back. All right. What was that, man? I'm sorry, what was that? What was that, what was that, what was that? Okay, Mashiach, right? When they brought us over here, the reason why people have a, a certain perception of the Bible. They say things like, oh, that's the white man's book, or, or that, that book put us in slavery. They don't understand what slave masters were doing to us at the time. While they were beating us, whipping us, raping our wives in front of us, raping the husbands in front of the wives, tying a man in arms to this horse, tying his legs to that horse, beating the horses till they ripped the man apart, feeding the babies to alligators. These all this stuff they don't tell us in the schools. But these things happen. They used to call what's called alligator baby, right? When he used to tie, they had kidnapped the baby in the middle of the night. He was like two or below. They would tie a rope around him, throw him in the river. Alligator would come and bite the baby, and they would shoot the alligator in the head. They would use the baby as baby. So while they were doing all these things, they were holding the Bible in their hand. Now, when them taking the Bible from us and taking certain pages and books out, we only had what they gave us. Right. And we only can read what they told us. Right. So based on our own knowledge, we started to associate everything that we were going through with that book. Yeah. And we started to hate that book. Yeah. Because every time something bad happened to us, that book was always present. Uh -huh. And we don't understand that they were using psychology to manipulate us against the very book that is our culture. Because it's like a kind of a Willie Lynch syndrome. They knew it's going to come a time we want to set them free. But once they get free, they ain't going to want to return back to their culture because they're going to hate this book so much. Because we held this book while we did all these things, they're going to associate their pain with this book. Because we know they're not going to read. We're just going to tell the pastor what to tell them, and they're never going to read. They're going to go into different religions. They will never come back into themselves because as we beat them, as we raped them, as we fed their babies to alligators, we had this book right in front of us. And we don't know that they were using psychology to manipulate not only who we are, but the culture that's attached to the book. Mm. So I'm saying all this to say the Jesus that they taught us wasn't the Mashiach of the Bible. They had to change the image of Mashiach because they knew, listen, the only kings that they know, the only masters that they know look like them. Right. So if we kill all the older slaves, throw them off the river, and keep the younger ones and try to indoctrinate them, change the image of what Mashiach is, man, this thing will work. Right. Well, now nah, this thing can't work, man. These God's chosen people, yeah, but they broke the commandments of the Most High. Right. So the curse has got to come upon them. So as long as we can keep them in disobedience, we can keep them in slavery. Right. Um. 
Y'all don't believe they read this book for their advantage? You don't think the Arabs look at it and say, hey, oh, hold on. One of the curses is the enemy shall come amongst them and be the head and not the tail. Let's go over what the Israelite says. And let's make money off them. Because they're under the curse. Because they're in disobedience. Okay, that's a whole other lesson. Let's go. The great Jesus versus the Hebrew Yahushua. Jesus has Greek ways. Say Greek ways. Now, sure, not Hebrew culture. Jesus says that the law is done away with. See, because when you think Jesus, you think these things. When you think Yahshua, you think something totally different. Why? Because the name carries the authority, the character, and the reputation. Yahshua says, walk in the law. He said, I ain't come to destroy it. I came to what? Fulfill don't mean destroy. Jesus changed the Sabbath day to Sunday. While Mashiach keeps the true Sabbath. You see the difference? Jesus says, just believe. Just believe, right? He even got Kanye West looking up Jesus. A whole nother thing. See, let me show you something. Hallelujah. Thank you, my son. Kanye can't come over to this and do nothing like that. I'm good. I know you got some crazy rules, but them crazy rules know they got to follow law, statutes, and commandments. Though. They may be crazy, they may act stupid, but they have a guideline that they got to follow. You just can't come over to this coach and act to know any kind of way. See, over there, you can put Christian on any name and become any name. You can be Christian gay. You can be a Christian slime ball. You can be Christian anything. But you cannot be Hebrew or anything. You either want to adapt to the culture or you're going to be called something else. Hallelujah. So go ahead. I should have had that. Jesus is kindly. I'm sure that you be. Go on. Jesus says, just believe. All you have to do is have what? Faith. And yeah, you make it in. Don't worry about nothing else. Just have faith. Right? Yeah, but, 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 man, my leg about to fall. Just have faith. Faith without works as well. Yeah. It's dead, man. So they skip over that. They spiritualize. I don't know what they do. Just believe. Yahshua says, Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Those that keep the commandments of God and have faith in Mashiach. Right. Right. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus got silky hair. <laughs> It's silky, right? Oh, that's like silky. Jesus, y'all know the Y'all know this. Yeah, y'all know Jesus with the, the picture. We just talking about the pictures, right? He, he looking gay like the two. Right? Now he's doing like a peace sign, and he, it's really a demonic sign. You know, he's doing his thing. And, like, man, that's how he looked like. I always with him. Yeah. Okay, so Jesus got silky. I sure got Willie here. Right, right. We seeing the difference? Right. Jesus got blue eyes. Y'all sure got eyes like fire. Right. See, he coming back because he mad. Say, he mad. He mad. He mad at folk. And he ain't only mad at other nations. He mad at some of us, too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh my, Justin, Justin, no. All right, don't, don't cut the video. Hey, 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 let's be serious. We're going to cut the video off. Let's be serious. Well, 
Jesus is gay. Because of his pictures. I, I call it like I see. If any man is in a picture looking gay, then more than likely he's gay, right? Yahweh Shua is straight. Hallelujah. Yahweh Shua is a man. Hallelujah. Well, they're going to they gonna, they gonna yeah. get me yes. in this. When uh -huh. you talk about my Jesus. Now, let me, let me give another side note. When I talk, we understand that those are, there are some within the Christian faith that just didn't have this knowledge. But they've been serving the most high and walking in truth. There are some. Look, somebody said there are some. It's not all. We can't be like that. Because they, just like they can't put all Hebrews in the same category, we can't put all Christians in the same category. Right? But we're not coming at the person, we're coming at the doctrine. That right, they preach. right. That's so why the Bible says, come out from a mother. Be ye separate. Separate yourself from them. The time is out where, you know, you've been in this walk and you've been learning. Uh, I'll be over here, but uh, I'm going to go here on Sunday. Take your time, but it's a time where the line is being drawn. Right? You can't be unstable, right? You got to get a solid foundation and stand on it. Hallelujah. Because a lot of people are waiting, and this may be somebody in the video. A lot of people are waiting for you to leave the church because they've been watching you. But because you're worried about what they're thinking, you're just staying still. Because you got secret followers, everybody do, right? People that just, you know, even on Facebook, they just go on your Facebook, but they don't like nothing of you. But then you heard that they was talking about all your posts later that day, right? But they ain't going to comment, they ain't going to do nothing. I, I even get a lot of people that, that inbox and say, yo, man, your post is deep, but they're afraid to like it. I can't like it because the way my Christianity said <laughs> And I know people will see it, so I, I can't like it. But it's good, though. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> I say, well, hallelujah, man. You know, I don't care about you liking it or not. You know, secret follow. So that's the difference between Greek Jesus and the Hebrew Yahushua. Name change. By changing the name, they change the character, they change the authority. And he changed the reputation of Yahushua and Yah. By changing the name, they change the character, they change the authority, and they change the reputation of Yahushua and Yah. They change the authority by making Yahushua the weak and power. Right. Jude chapter 1, verse 4. Right. For there are certain men that crept in on the way who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of Elohim into the sinlessness, and denying the only Yahuwah, Elohim, Lord God, and Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Denying the only, say the only. Question. Say that again. Yeah, let me get you, me get you the mic. That's, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. So, you know, if, if a person comes to um, faith even more, closer to the most high in the sun, and is led to the Sabbath, um, Yahushua, Yeshua, you know, Yahushai, as people give adoration, it's strong as far as the frequency. So it's not enough to say, oh, well, you know, Jesus or yeah, you're not sure. Right. No, it's like this gave the uh, the divide there. Jesus is a Sunday culture, Sunday worship, uh -huh. Sunday government meeting. Uh -huh. You're living yourself, your frequency to the uh, God, this world, and to the papacy. As a matter of fact, the Pope even says, if you follow uh, Sunday, you will follow our law. Uh -huh. It's in their books. Right. It's in their books. Right. He says you do well to keep the Sabbath, but then you are following the the, the Sabbath the culture of the Bible. Hallelujah. So you're telling the people who are you following? Right. Because I should hear my voice and they follow me, hear me. Uh, and so right. you, when you when you're moving 
over your, your whole life, your mindset over to that Sabbath culture, you are putting yourself on the path to following the ways of the Most High, following the path of what the Messiah came on his platform. So you will submit to his government when he comes into the earth fully. And you will not submit to the anti Messiah, which has even come even more in frequency in these last days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, that's good. That's good. Because the coach said a key word, frequency. When you hear the name Jesus, you think of Caesar Borea. Right. right. You do. Yeah. When you hear Yahweh Shua, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. When you hear Jesus, you, you, you think hippie. Right. Freedom. I can just free to do whatever I want to do. When you think I'm sure, you think God knows. You think law. Right? You think standards. Frequency. Say frequency. So, they change the authority by making Yahshua look weak in power. They change the reputation by lying about what he came to do. We're talking about the system of Christianity. They say that in Matthew 17 that Mashiach came and did away with the law. He said, think not that I come to destroy the law. He said that first because he knew folks don't think that. He said, think not, okay? Just, just don't think this ever in your life. That I came to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill. Now I just did, you know, I was talking to a and and, and um, and he called me, you know, I guess he felt he had me, you know. Yeah, you know, man, it's just, you know, um, that word fulfilled, it means, you know, Christ completed it. So in him, we don't have to do it. We don't have to be in him. So I said, explain in him. Like, explain that. <laughs> then, you know, it's always being said, they spiritualize it. But they, they always no content. I said, okay, I said, you know what, this is what we're going to do. And when I just did this word, it, it, it blew his mind. It's just so simple. I said, we're going to take this word fulfilled and we're going to use it in different scripture. Okay? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does that mean? Well, that means you, you won't do the lust of the flesh. Okay. So we are understanding that it means do so let's go back to Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to do. Say do. Wait, wait, brother, wait. Wait, brother, you, you, uh, you, 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 you kind of twisted, you twisted words, now. Bro, I'm not twisting no words. You said what it means. I just put it there. So fulfill means this over here, but it don't mean that over there. This is the way that they destroy his reputation yeah. by lying on him. Because further down in that same chapter, he said, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just adding it. But he said, uh, 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 greater is he that not only do these things, but teach men to do it. And he said, those are going to be least in the kingdom that not only don't do them, but teach men to break them also. So he clarified that. But they lie on him. So they attempt to destroy his reputation. They change his character by changing the image. So before we go here, you know, before I bring in any book from the Bible for us how to get his spill, I don't want people to think we're just pulling books from anywhere. And I was just saying what I said last week. If you were able to talk to anybody in the year 1610, that Bible would look different from your Bible because it would have more books. It also had different letters, right? We kind of dealt with that. The book of Maccabees, if you want to know what happened between Mal Malachi and Matthew, that wasn't no silent years. There wasn't no silent years. That's a silent lie, right? Because if you read the book of Maccabees, it'll tell you what happened between that time. And I'm about to show you one of the things that happened during that time. Where it was prophesied that 
it will be what we're looking at right now. Maccabees, first Maccabees chapter 3, verses 46 and 48. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Muspia over against Jerusalem, for Muspia was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. And then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law. Say, so they laid open the book of the law. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So this white right Jesus that we see, the Maccabees seen the same thing. Where the heathen sought to paint the images of Elohim in their images. Right. That's why they took Maccabees out. And we're not going to create our own images. We'll be doing the same thing they did. I know we see dogs, you know, dogs skin pictures of Mashiach, the Yahshua, but we are not to make any image or create an image of the Most High on Mashiach. We just, we see him when we get there. We don't know who he is, because his hands will be pitched, right? And we we'll look on him, and we we'll thank him for it, because through that for our salvation, hallelujah. It's important for us. The reason why we went through this is not to beat anybody in the head, it's not to condemn anybody, but it's for you to get a proper understanding of who and what you serve. Because if you don't understand, you are just going in the same cycle that you came out of. Hallelujah. We have to know the difference. We got to know who we serve. Come on, man. Yes, sir. Because if we're not careful, we can be serving an image and an idol. Like I said, even these dark skinned pictures of Messiah, that's no better than the white images. We have to be careful. Now, for those that have been using the name of Jesus, take your time, go home, be like the Berean Council. Search the scriptures. See if everything that was presented is true. If it is true, then you have to make sure you line yourself up with the truth. Because the truth will make you 